ran out of business. their weaknesses in systems and in people, right? Because you realize I'm not good at every part, you know? And I, I know as a faith person, I know, you know, I always use Moses. Moses was a stuttering dude, yeah. but his brother was eloquent. So look, you come, I got the message, but you got to say it for me, bro. <laughs> That's dope. You know what I mean? So, That's dope. Yeah. So you mentioned that they should see if they can sing this one. Right? Yeah. But in business, people have, all right, I want to want to do a shirt company. Sure. Or I want to have a boutique, right? But how do you, it, you got to actually do it to know what you're good at, mm -hmm. right? But what are some methods or what are some starter methods that people can utilize to even test themselves out prior to jumping right in, yeah. right? Because sometimes that's hard. Sometimes the... The business people want to tap into, you got to invest in. It takes large investments. And yeah. if you don't get a chance to sink or swim prior to you make those investments, you really lose out. So based off of what you just said, I think that was great. Mm -hmm. What are some test trials or test methods people can do? So two things I think of right off the bat. Number one, find a coach, a mentor, or someone who can walk you through business. Okay. If you can listen and if you're teachable and coachable, you're going to be a lot further than a lot of other people. Because okay. a lot of people try to start businesses and think, I don't need anybody to walk me through this. I don't mm -hmm. need a teacher. I don't need a coach. That's just not true. Mm -hmm. In the ATMs, what I don't say is just as important as what I do say. What I don't say is I bought a course for $897 to teach me mm -hmm. how to be successful with my ATMs. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What I don't say about the marketing is that I did that before in another business, and I've been planning and doing marketing for six years. Wow. So the first thing is a coach. The second thing I will say is build up a small business before the big business. So do you have the wherewithal to get your LLC or whatever the corporation or whatever, your EIN, set up everything, get a real logo, and start selling something simple to your family and friends. I want you to market it on social media. I want you to sell it. I want you to have office hours. If you can do that to your family and friends, yeah. it's easy after that. Gotcha. That's what I would do. Gotcha. You, you mentioned something. Mm -hmm. You mentioned... You bought a program yep. to learn, mm -hmm. right? So you're the teacher being a student. Absolutely. Right? Or the student being a teacher. You know, <laughs> right? you're funny. Yeah, yeah. you're okay. good. Yeah, 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 you're good. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes you got to fall back to learn in order to teach and to lead. That's... That's good, man. That's so good. And that's the gem in and of itself. Wow. And, and you know what's so funny? I laugh at when you said that because you know I have a video series called Student Teacher. Well, I might know a little something <laughs> about that. You know? I might know a little something. You know? but, but that was such a lesson we learned. Every good teacher has to be a good student. Wow. You, it's no way in the world. You can you can give lessons if you're not really willing to sit under and glean and learn from someone else. Okay. You know, a lot of the game that I'm kicking is stuff that I've learned, read, or experienced through other people. Okay. That's how life works. Wow. You know, so whether you're a student of your own lessons or you're a student of someone else's, you inherently take those things in and you regurgitate them and package them as your own. And next thing you know, now you're a teacher. But I'm only giving you what I learned. And that's how life works. So, yeah, that's, yeah, you have to be, you have to be a good uh, student to be a great teacher. Yeah. Thank you for elaborating. Yeah, man, the, the, the video series. So uh, when Phil and I were in high school together, uh, not in the same classes, but we were in the same high school. And there was a student teacher about 18, 17 years ago who uh, joined us there at Northeast. And, uh, he, you know, he came in and was really green, you know, very young, first year of college. And, but he took to the students very well, you okay. know, uh, Caucasian gentleman. And anyway, I kept up with him over the years and caught back up with him. Now he is a teacher uh, at, at a university here in uh, Philadelphia. He actually teaches other teachers history. Wow. Yeah. And so I caught up with him and I said, hey, I want to talk to you about some things, justice, 
uh, citizenship, race, just life, you know, things, history. I want to talk to you about some things that I don't know. And also from the, some of the experiences that I have, I want to share with you. And I'm thinking since you were my student teacher 17 years ago, but now we're going to be learning life lessons from one another. I want to do a video series called Student mm. Teacher. And this was a forum to open up a conversation in the midst of a year where there's so much going on between black and white and old and young, yeah. between a black man and a white man from two different walks of life yeah. where we're learning life lessons from one another. Okay. And so that video series can also be found on my YouTube. Uh, you can look up at, at I am Dante Moore. You'll find that student teacher. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's been great. We're on episode going on episode four. Okay. It's wow. great. It's been good. Wow. That's dope that you kept up with more. Yeah. Let me ask you this, right? Because I've seen you on the front line, right? Mm -hmm. During um man, during this whole Trump campaign, yeah. man, we've seen a lot of hatred, right? Yeah. A lot of racism. Of course. A of course. lot of uh you know, the, the boys against the blacks and you yeah. know what I mean? And we're the blacks against the uh you know, to uh, against the their movement and everything mm -hmm. like that. And I've seen you on the front line, yeah. right? You you stand more so where do you say you stand? I, I would say I'm I'm not on either side of the of the aisle, but I'm more so concerned about the citizens of my city. Okay. You know, I'm not really concerned about the politics of it all. I'm concerned about what happens when everyone leaves and Philadelphia has to put Philadelphia back together. Gotcha. You get what I'm saying? Gotcha. Have you received any any action or um, I'm sorry, not action, but more so reaction to you being more so on that activist side and working with you know, as you said, this uh, this white man with this uh, student teacher, like, how does that come like? How does that relationship look like? At dealing with, being a black man, dealing with black issues, right? Yeah. And also having a relationship with this uh, white gentleman, right? Mm -hmm. What is that race relationship like? It's a great question. The reason that he's on this pop, on this video series with me is uh, when the gentleman Botham Jean got shot in his apartment by Amber Geiger, uh, for when he was in I eating ice cream. Yeah. I, and then in between that time and there were some things that were happening in my life with, you know, I, I ran into some issues with race downtown and I was done with white people. I didn't have a lot of white friends anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who could I really talk to through these issues? Because I don't want to feel this way, but that's just where I'm at. Yeah. I called Tim. Called this gentleman that's doing student teacher with me, and we sat down at a Korean restaurant and talked for a good amount of time. He shared some of his life experiences. He's in an interracial marriage, not with an African American, but even still, he's experienced racism as a white man yeah. uh, from his, you know, his partner's family. He's experienced something, and he understood my perspective because he's a history teacher, so he knows injustice and he sees that history has not been kind to people that are melanated, yeah. and he was able to hear my perspective. And that's why I said, you know what? I want to do a video series with you because you have perspective, you have history on your side, you're intelligent, mm -hmm. and you understand that race is a real thing, and we have real issues to get. Wow. Yeah. That's so that's dope. that's why I chose him. That's dope. Yeah. Now you know I, I'm not I'm not really one to bring up race, right? Sure. sure. Um, just because I look at it as I'm a networker. Mm -hmm. right? That's. That's my thing, I yeah. network. And I network with any and all. Right? Yeah. And um, do you feel like there is a race issue in the entrepreneurial and business world? I don't know if there's a race issue. Other, more, other I, w I would say there's, I would say that certain races are more prone to go after certain types of entrepreneurial pursuits. I'll say that. Okay. And as a result, the uh, the entrepreneurship landscape may seem segmented or segregated or or kind of has a chasm between it because for example I brought up an, an example earlier most of the people that do ATMs are older white men okay. that's because some of the folks that look like me would think that only banks can have ATMs mm -hmm. so they'll go for the vending machines and the gumball machines but never think that every time you go to the Chinese store that ATM is ran by somebody that lives in that neighborhood. So it's not so much that there's a race issue, but I would say that there is an education issue based off of what we're exposed to, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't think about doing things that will make us money and not show us off as being famous and rich and successful. Wow. I go inside of a, a pizza store and I see you swiping your card and I'm getting a slice of pizza knowing that you're paying me every time you take the money out. Yeah. 
but you feel like you might have to start a business that shows that you're an entrepreneur and shows everybody, but that's not where the money's always made. Yeah, yeah. That's so I think that's the difference. It's a mindset. And you say that because culturally, us as black men, mm -hmm. um, we're always, not, not always, but a lot of times culturally, we do things to where, we, as you said, we, we show off, right? We, yeah. we want to show we got the nice clothing, we want to show we got the nice jewelry, the nice vehicles. Right. Um, we like to flaunt. That's just part of our culture. We like right? Um, so you're saying that's not always necessary when it comes to the business world. Absolutely, man. Quiet money is the best money. It's just like stocks. You know, brother, a Wall Street trapper says this. He says, I like boring companies. Mm. And I love when he says that because what he's basically saying is, I don't need too much movement and volatility in that market. I need to know that company's sturdy. That's how I invest. Mm. And the same thing with money. I like quiet money that's consistent. I don't need loud money that's going to crash. That's dope. Right? That's, that's, yes. that's, that's, that's a gem. That's a gem right yeah, there. Bring your jewelry box, man. <laughs> we, drop, we, drop, we drop all kinds of gems, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We drop all kinds of gems, yeah. Right. So, um, what else you got for us? Hey, man, I mean, that's it. You know, I'll be honest with you. When you when you think about who you are as a person, and you think about, you know, the things that I'm doing, I might seem like I'm scattered. I want to say this. I want to be very clear on this last point. Oh, we're not, oh, yeah. oh, no. Okay, cool. Okay. So so as it relates to my business. No, no, no. I'm good. I thought we was rapping. All right. So as it relates to my businesses, I want to share a point. And this is going to help somebody. You got to understand that in entrepreneurship, everybody's driving their own vehicle. Okay. So this is a really important point. I like this. I like, I like this. It's like a parable. Yeah, like a parable. Like a little analogy. So everyone's driving their own vehicle. Okay. Now, the gas that you choose to put in your vehicle is up to you. Now, most people, or not most people, a good amount of people will say, I want to do this, I want to start that to show this person that, or to show people I got this, or show them that I finally made it. You know, it's a competitive, I want to do better than the next man. Yeah. That's the gas they're putting in their vehicle. Yeah. But you got to understand that that gas will not take you on a long journey. Wow. So if that's the gas you're putting in your vehicle, you will not make it far. So you got to examine the vehicle that you have. Whatever your entrepreneurship uh, pursuit is, you got to understand what kind of vehicle you have. Do you have a vehicle that can handle every single season of entrepreneurship? Wow. Just like a all, a all, you know, a four-wheel drive vehicle can handle different terrains. Different uh, vehicles with different horsepower can handle different capacities. If you don't have the type of vehicle that can handle a certain weather or climate, you should stay out of the climate. And that's what we got to realize. Just because we're all on the road to entrepreneurship doesn't mean we all drive at the same speed.